Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Genesis 44. We left off, they were eating, drinking, and being merry. And he, Joseph, commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry. And then it's the asses. Don't overburden them. And put every man's money in his sack's mouth. Again. So it's going to be double the first time. Because they brought money because... The money was in the sacks. They brought money to buy more. Now they're putting the money from before and the money back. And put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest and his corn money. And he, the servant, the steward, did according to the word that Joseph has spoken. So this is where we're going to run away from the type of Joseph being a type of Christ. Joseph has told the steward, fill them with food, fill them with their money. Here's my cup. Put it in Benjamin's sack. As soon as, it was, as, soon as the morning was light, sun's coming up, that moment, the men were sent away, they and their asses. And when they were going out of the city, they left Egypt, and not yet far off. Joseph said unto his steward, Up, follow after the men. And when thou dost overtake them, say unto them, Wherefore have ye rewarded evil for good? Is not this it in which my Lord drinketh? Joseph's cup. And whereby indeed he divineth? I don't know if that's true. I don't think Joseph used a cup to tell dreams. He, he told us God did it. And Joseph's telling us a little lie here. And ye have done evil in so doing. And I feel a sneeze coming. And he overtook them. <coughs> there it is. He overtook them. And he spake unto thee these same words. It says, Joseph said, verse 5. This, this servant is... Re it does exactly what Joseph tells him to do. Like the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does what God and Jesus tells him to do. And there's no sin. And they said unto him, Wherefore saith my Lord these words? God forbid that thy servants should do according to this thing. Alright? But... We would not steal the cup, but we would try to tell our dad that your brother's dead. He's the same guy. You know what I mean? Oh, we wouldn't do so bad as stealing. But what'd you do with Joseph? Hmm? What'd you do with him? You do that, wouldn't you? You sell your brother, wouldn't you? You lied to your dad, wouldn't? That's not honoring your father. You're not so innocent. We're all guilty. All have sinned. Don't say you want to steal a cup. And guess whose job is to reprove the world of sin? There's the steward. Oh, well, we didn't know. There's a lot of things we don't know. But isn't the law that, you know, ignorance is, it, it does not follow the law. There's no excuse. You ought to know. Behold, the money which we found in our sacks' mouths 
we brought again unto thee out of the land of Cana. How then should we steal out of that Lord's house silver and gold? We brought the money back. Doesn't that show who we are? With whomsoever of thy servants it be found, both let him die, and we also will be my Lord's bondmen. Okay. You're going to open your mouth and insert your foot. Jacob did this with Rachel. Well, oh, who shall find your gods, let him not live. Well, he didn't know that Rachel did steal. Now, is it remarkable that Rachel stole the gods and her son said, you stole my cup? Where do you go with that one? And he said, now also let it be according to your words. All right, the one that has a silver cup, he's going to die. Capital punishment. And you, you're going to be the servant if we find it. He, he with whom it's found shall be my servant. Now he's speaking for Joseph. The one that steals from Joseph is not going to be the steward's servant. He's going to be Joseph's servant. Now the boys said, the brothers, let him not die. Let him die. And the servant's like, no, 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 that's not worthy of death. But you will be my servant. And that's a Bible doctrine. You'll find that in the law when the law does come. Now, how would you prevent stealing in America if you want to go by the Bible? There are two aspects of the Bible. You will become my servant. That'll stop people from stealing. Another one is, it says in the law that David even put, you're going to pay fourfold. You steal $1,000 from me, you now owe me 4000 That would be a great deterrent to crime. Not staying at the Hotel Correction Institute and get everything handed to you hand and foot. So that servant says, the one who I find that, co that cup, he's going to be my servant. Now the servant knows already who, is it, who it is. But the brothers have no idea. Not even Benjamin. Then they speedily took down every man his sack to the ground. And opened every man his sack. And he searched the servant. The steward. And began at the elders. Here we go again. We're going by the birthright. But we already know the birthright. Chapter 43. Began at the eldest, and left at the youngest, Benjamin, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Uh-oh. Then they rent their clothes, and laid in every man his ass. They got on the asses, and returned to the sea. Now, can you just imagine, it's not totally in detail, can you just imagine that little trip back to Joseph? Benjamin, what'd you do? I didn't do it. Oh. Yeah, right, Benjamin. Who found who found the cup and who, where was the cup? Honest, I, I swear I didn't do nothing. It's almost like the kind of routine Galatians six seven that they had conducted themselves in front of Jacob. They thought, well, where's Joseph? Well, I, I don't know. There's the cold. What do you think happened? Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that you're going to reap. They're reaping it right now, and they're in complete terror because they don't know what Joseph's going to do to them. And they don't know it's Joseph. They know it's the governor of Egypt, and he already had treated them harshly. He had already took them, took them and put them in jail, released them, and put one in jail until they came back. And they feared Joseph enough. They said, listen, Dad, Jacob, Israel... We've got to bring that boy or we're not going. You understand me? So now they're stopped. They're checked. They're accused of stealing. The cup is found in Benjamin. There's one son that is very paranoid right now. Very upset and very scared to what's happening. That would be Judah. Because Judah said, I'm going to bring that boy back. Benjamin. Right now, forget the rest of the story for now, what we do know. 
if this was a normal study outside of God, Benjamin's never coming home again. He's a thief. He said, well, he didn't do it. It doesn't care. The evidence was found in his bag. He should have been with his bag the whole time. And the brethren are charged with it. It's like a guy, you know, you pull into a gas station. Your passenger gets out, goes into the place. He shoots the place up and robs it and gets in the car and you drive off. Now you're accessory to the fact. Accessory to the crime shows up in Genesis 44. And they have no idea what happened. This is like Joseph getting caught with a woman all by himself. You got to protect yourself. You got to keep on your eye on things that's going on. Because it's an evil, wicked world out there. I read something today, I'm not going to dare read it again. But there are people who are looking out to get rid of the good, clean people. They rent their clothes. And, and verse 14. And Judah and his brethren, Judah put in charge. Judah said, one told Jacob, listen, I will be the surety. Judah is now taking charge of Benjamin as he told his father. And Judah is now, come on, Benjamin. I told dad I was going to be a surety for you. And whatever happened, you better shut up and you better listen to me. And you better obey me. But I, I don't want to hear but. And Judah and his brethren came to Joseph's house. They're there back at Joseph's house. They made a complete circle. For he was yet there. And they fell before him on the ground. There they are bowing down again. And Joseph said unto them, What deed is this that ye have done? He knows. Adam, what would you do? God knew. Now here it's a false charge. Here we eliminate the, the, the type of Christ through, through Joseph, but yet still, Joseph wants them to repent. They knew what the charge was. Someone stole the golden cup. I mean the silver cup. And ye... What ye not... That such a man as I can certainly divine. I thought that was by God, Joseph. What are you doing, Joseph? You're not a diviner. God is. Remember, that's what you told the baker and, and, the, and the butler, and that's what you told Pharaoh? So, and Judah said, What shall we say unto my Lord? What shall we speak? For how shall we clear us? Now look at Judah. He's not saying, oh, we didn't do it. We were framed. Judah takes the situation and says, we're guilty. I don't care how it happened. I don't care what happened. That stolen cup was in one of our bags. We're guilty. Look at that. Jesus Christ, sinless perfection, righteousness of God, did not cry foul. He did not cry lawyer. Uh, Peter said there was no guile in his mouth. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. He went to Calvary's cross. Guilty of our sins, not his. Judah becomes a type of Jesus Christ now. How shall we clear ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of thy servants. Ooh. -hoo. That's interesting. If thou shalt confess your sins, he is faithful enough and just to forgive us our sins. He's saying, listen, God found us out, not the steward. God. That steward, if he's the type of Holy Spirit, he's the one that convinces us of sin. That steward is working through Judah. Behold, we are in my Lord's servant. We are my Lord's servant. Here we are. We're guilty. Both we both we and he that also whom the cup is found. 
All 11 of us. Now, can you imagine the other... I guess we went 10. The other nine... Well, Jude, what do you say? Uh, uh, Jude, not me. I'm just, uh, 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 he's a different mother. And uh, No! You, these are the same boys that let's sell them. Let's kill them. Let's get rid of them. And now you're going to say that we're all going to serve the, the governor because... No. This is not the way these brothers are. And he said, God forbid that I should do so. Take all of you as my servants. But the man in whose hand the cup is found, and Joseph knows who, he shall be my servant. And as for you, get you up in peace unto your father. Go home. Now what is Joseph doing here? That's right. Go home and do what you did to me. Go back home and tell dad. Now remember, Joseph doesn't know what happened. But the moment he was sold, that's it. He, he, you go back and tell dad you lost another one of Rachel. Come on, boys. Now, <laughs> that's cruel. <laughs> that is cruel. And he doesn't know what Reuben said to his father. I mean Judah, excuse me, Judah and Reuben. He says, go home and don't have another boy of Rachel with you guys. Oh, if that did not bring thoughts in their mind that we already lost. Well, you know, they lost three brothers, you know that? They lost Joseph, they lost Simeon, they're about to lose. Now, listen, they don't know the end of the chapter. They don't know the end of the book of Genesis. As far as they, they got they got something back, but here goes another one. And Simeon only got half, not even, not even halfway. And Joseph is setting them up, saying, hey, go. You like taking care of your brother? You like deceiving your brother? Here's another one. I'll keep him. And can you imagine if they took off like that and left Benjamin? As they left Joseph, and Joseph be like, hey, 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 Benjamin, guess who I am? We'll give him a little time to get back to Dad and give him to explain. Then we'll hop on my chair. We'll go, we'll go see where Dad is. <laughs> that would have been an interesting story. You imagine him going back and telling him some wild tale, and Jacob, what's that chariot coming? Well, what's that fancy chariot coming? There's two men in it. <laughs> this, gets, this story gets a whole much better as we go with the chapter. Then Judah came near unto him, Joseph, and said, Oh, my Lord. <laughs> That's when you use that expression, Oh, my God, because I'm in trouble. Not OMG. Oh, my Lord. I told Dad if I don't bring him back, I'm in trouble. Let thy servant, him, Judah, I pray thee, speak a word in my Lord's ears. Let not thy anger burn against thy servant for thou art even as Pharaoh oh, you and Pharaoh are the same God and Jesus Christ are the same and again Joseph doesn't rebuke him on that statement my Lord asks his servant saying have ye a father or a brother and we said unto my Lord this is Joseph we have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one. So he was little. And his brother is dead. <laughs> Whoa, what happened he's not? He's dead. And he alone is left of his mother, Rachel. Benjamin is the only child of Rachel left. And his father loveth him. So the love that he had for Joseph went to Benjamin. And now if the love of Joseph angered his brothers enough about the dreams and everything to sell to get rid of him, what do you think their anger was with Benjamin? I wonder if he got a special code. So when Joseph says, you leave that boy here and you guys get home, 
without Judas being there, okay, see it, bye. And they'll be talking about, well, let's say the same thing happened to Joseph. But look who's speaking, Judah. And thou says unto thy servants, bring him down unto me, that I may set my eyes upon him. This is all true. And we said unto, unto the, my Lord, the lad cannot leave his father. For if he should leave his father, his father would die. Thou says unto thy servants, except your younger brother come down with you, you shall see my face no more. You can't see God unless you got the son. I mean S-O-N. I mean capital S-O-N. Don't come to God with nuts and berries and fruit. You better, that was good. You better have the S-O-N. And I believe it was Benjamin, the son of my right hand. And that's where Jesus is seated. Ooh. This is a Bible, great. This says 1707 B.C. Ooh, say 30, let's say just roughly 1800 years before Jesus Christ goes back and sits at the right hand of the Father. We're looking at Jesus Christ sitting at the right hand of the Father. And it came to pass when we came up unto thy servant, my father, we told him the words of my, my Lord. And our father said, go again and buy us a little food. Now look at between 24 and 25, they've ate all the food that they bought. And he said, well, go get some more. And we said, we cannot go down. If our youngest brother be with us, then we will go down. For we may not see the man, look, there it is again, the man's face. Except our youngest brother be with us. God died, we can't. Well, why not? We got to have that. No! We, then we're not going. Remember what Judah told him? We're not Dad, if you would just shut up and give us the son, we would be back by now. And thy servant, my father, said unto us, Ye know that my wife bare me two sons. And Judah's talking to one of them right now. Now, if Joseph's not going to wet his pants, he's going to wet it now. Judah has no idea who he's talking to. And the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces. Joseph is first time hearing this story. Would you tell dad about me? You mean you didn't tell him you sold me? You let him believe that I've been eaten of animals? And I saw him not since. Now imagine you just learning what your brother's lie has been all these years. I don't know what Joseph thought of his father Jacob and all that. I mean, probably happiness. But now he hears, you mean to tell me my dad thinks I'm dead? When you guys sold me? Right there, there should not have been judgment fall upon those, those brothers right It should be right now. I saw him not since. And if ye take this also from me, Benjamin, and mischief befall him, he shall bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Now Joseph's really losing. Because the love that my father had unto me has been given to my brother, the only children of my mother, Rachel. That very love. That he's thinking about that you have sold me. He thinks I'm dead of animals, and he passed that love of me unto my son. I mean, my brother. Now, therefore, when I came to thy servant, my father, the lad be not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the lad's life. It shall come to pass when he has seen that the lad, the lad is not with us, that he will die. And thy servant shall bring down the gray hairs of thy servant, our father, with sorrow to the grave. If we don't bring Benjamin, he's dead. Now 
Now let's see why Judah is in the line of Jesus Christ. For thy servant became surety for the lad unto my father. There it is. There it is. Brothers. Saying, if I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. Substitution atonement. If Benjamin is not kept, you do whatever you do to me. Now watch. Watch Bar uh, Barabbas. Watch it. For thy servant became surety for the lad unto my father, saying, If I bring him not unto thee, then I shall bear the blame to my father forever. Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad, a bondman to my lord. Barabbas, go home. We're going to crucify Jesus. Look at that. Governor, sir, lord, don't know it's Joseph. Let me stay being your bondman. Please let Benjamin go home. There it is, Barabbas. Seventeen hundred years before Christ even stands before Pilate. And Judah, the line of Jesus Christ, says, Listen, I'll stay, let him go. Father, I will die upon the cross. I will suffer punishment. I will take the abusement. I will do Isaiah 53. I will come out of that tomb as an empty tomb. As a witness, I will sit in the right hand of your Father. Please, if they trust in me, if they believe in me, let them have eternal life that they'll never, ever lose. Benjamin stays forever a child of Jacob. And he gets involved with his, his family. Gets involved in wild, wicked sin. And yet, you'll find them. A gate of Benjamin. Now therefore I pray thee, let thy servant abide instead of the lad a bondman to my Lord, and let the lad go up with his brethren home. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. <laughs> I didn't want to trust him with it, but I'm just saying, let him go home with his brethren. For how shall I go up to my father? And the lad be not with me. Least for adventure I see the evil that shall come on my father. Now let me just read verse 1 in the next chapter. We'll study the Lord 1. And Joseph could not refrain himself. I would not be able to either. Can you just picture can you picture Judas sitting there talking to Joseph and his face is breaking down. There are tears coming down. And Judah thinks it's because of the love he has for Benjamin. And he has no idea he's speaking to that brother that they deceived. Judah's probably thinking just, just, just uh, he, he, he's buying this story. Even though it's a true story, he's buying it. Look, he's got tears. In a moment, he's going to wipe those tears away and he's going to say, Come here, guys. I am Joseph. There's going to be the next chapters. But after what Judah just said, do you see why Jesus Christ is in that line? And the Bible says when he reveals himself to, uh, there is this tear, and they're looking at him like, uh, I mean, their mouths are touching the ground. And that's a wonderful, great story of Jesus. Look how the types keep going back and forth. And in the middle of this whole thing, you've got the steward showing, hey, you guys are sinners. Judas steps up. Yeah, that's right. The cup was found. We are sinners. We are not going to deny it. Now, you got somebody comes to you. Yeah, you're a sinner. Oh, my mama made me do it. Oh, I didn't know I was going to do it. Oh, I need a lawyer. I'm blah, blah. You're not dealing with a person who's, who's ready to be saved. And Judah steps up to Joseph and says, oh, we're guilty. I just ask for one thing. Let Barabbas go home. I'll take the cross. And so when Jesus tells Christians, well, not Christians, when, when Jesus preaches, says, take up your cross, he says that before he's even gone to the cross. And I guarantee they never understood that. Because they didn't understand the resurrection. Jesus is up from the grave. He's alive. Yeah, right. 
Walks up to two men. How you guys want to Didn't you hear what happened today? No, what happened? This man that we believe is the prophet and all that, he's dead. And, you know, some women said he's alive. Blah, blah, blah. You know what's going to happen next? Lord willing, we get into the study. You can get, if we get raptured out here, you can read about, you know what's going to happen next? You know what wonderful is going to be happening? They're going to go back to their father and say, Joseph is alive. And he's going to be like, oh, come on. Cut it out. You guys are idiots. You, 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 he's alive? And then it says they, he looked over their shoulders and he saw all these wagons coming. That's not theirs. That's God sending for, hey, go get them. And that wonderful day when we realize that we are alive and well and that trumpet's going to blow and we're going to see all of us gathered together and we're going to see Jesus. Glory to God. And then the wagons that follow, eternal life, no more pain, no more sorrow. It's true. It's true. 